Bill Ryle. So we started out by saying the house should be called Stonehenge, but uh, since then we changed it and called it Noah's Ark, but we don't want Noah's Ark to float away. This one won't float away. We say, okay, we're sorry that the house is not gonna meet the Pacifel standard because of that heat loss on the northeast side of the building through all that glass, even though they're very, very good windows. I think are 8.5, but because it's still built to such high standards, it's easily, really easily net zero by putting solar panels on what turns out to be about one third of the available roof area. We try to achieve this standard of energy efficiency and quality of construction with all of our projects now. Our contractor, Phil Manuelli, is also on board with this. He, was, he did the very first Passive House, which is in the same neighborhood about a mile away from here, the very, very tiny uh, artist painting studio. When the owners got the land and we got hired to do the house, the first thing we had to do was figure out where to put the house. And we stood right, right in this area and thought this is the perfect place. Uh, it turned out to be elevation 10. And I thought, well, non-hurricane Sandy was 12 feet in the Hudson River. And probably all that land right down there we're looking at very nearby was flooded. So we, I got, went and got a ladder and then we stood there and said, well, actually, this is fantastic. One of the owners climbed up and said, this is just great. You're right, let's just put it up here. We can have the living room at this level. What that does though, for better and worse perhaps, is that it exposes the house really to the outside on all sides. You've got the, the roof, the walls, and the floor is as, every bit as exposed as, as, any, any, as any other part of the house. It's really a split level house. This is really an artificial level that's not quite here yet, but this is four feet above that level down there. And there is a crawl space underneath what will be the guest bedrooms on this level. So the crawl space does help a bit with the insulation and the exposure to the outside, but you still have to insulate it extremely well. I don't think that there's any evidence that we have restrained ourselves as architects trying to uh, design a house that's uh, quite tight well insulated and energy efficient. It will have a backup electrical generator up, up high, up there, and all the mechanicals are up there too. The house should function, still function, even if there were a 14 or 15 foot storm surge. And in fact, because we have the mechanicals really even up that high, I think as long as the, wind, the water doesn't go up to 20, below 20 feet above sea level, um, the mechanicals will still work and be powered by the generator this will be the refugee center here. There won't be anything left of the town at all, though, if that happens. Just this, this will be the last building standing in this town at the end of Long Island. And uh, we don't know when that's going to happen, but um, it's been scheduled. We just don't know what the schedule is. Over there, just another couple hundred feet, it technically is the wetlands, but you know, they're still very generous with the maps and the town would give you a, a building permit to put a house on the ground right here. So that is the part of the reason for putting the house on these big piers, which are pieces of wall, concrete wall, which gets it all up eight feet above the, above the, the grade. All this vegetation will continue back right underneath the house and when all the construction debris is gone, I think that it will be more transparent and the, the house will have uh, more of a floating effect than it has even now. Uh, it, looking at it, all these windows on the right are really a, a, they're basically a curtain wall and the structure is pulled forward. They're box beams outside of the window wall. They don't touch the window wall at all and that really does help to reduce the, the thermal bridging, which would have been a problem putting the steel uh, between the windows and between the sliding doors there. Also, you'll see that there's a big chimney and say, well, that's a problem, bringing all that, that could be a thermal bridge, but in fact, it's actually outside of the building envelope. The big chimney and the fireplace, which you see on the left, is for two reasons, actually. The fireplace is for the screened porch, which sounds strange, but in this climate, you can have uh, evenings, even in the summertime, when you would use the porch only if there's a, a fire in the fireplace. Also, it's a port-in-place chimney, which is needed for structural reasons to, to stabilize this whole floating structure and keep it from becoming a house of cards going like that. And in fact, on the right, some of the walls uh, actually turn 90 degrees so, to make the whole frame under un, the undercroft uh, structure rigid. 
the roof uh, extends uh, 40 inches, a thin, thin edge roof at the top, which actually, we wanted the appearance to be that, but we also needed to uh, pr provide some shade on those gigantic windows um, in, the summer, in the summer months. This is the main living space, living, dining table, kitchen in here. The kitchen counter will continue as a, just a counter, open counter, which you'll see through and become a narrow shelf all the way across, all the way across here. So you're not going to be stepping into this little trough here and you won't be stepping through this sliding door, which opens all the way from here out to here. Off in the distance, you can see Montauk Point out there, Gardner's Island, and at night you can even see the, the lights glowing on the north from Connecticut, which is 15 miles across uh, Long Island Sound. I'm standing on 10 inches of raised floor above the 12 inches of TJI, so, so that accounts for the 22 inches of low-end cellulose which is uh, pretty great. I mean, that, the floor in this case, the floating floor is as much outdoors as any other part of the building. Uh, these uh, gigantic windows are even larger than they actually had to be because if you look at the top, you'll see the, the ceiling is dropped, not, not for the purpose of adding yet more insulation. We just actually didn't need it anymore up there. But for really two reasons, to allow this easy locating of the air ducts. And also, the outlets are going off in a sort of secret manner, and you, wouldn't even, you won't even see the grills. The, the windows go up, though, up to that higher level, and both at the top and the bottom, they drop to the structural part of the house and not to the drop ceiling and not to the raised floor. So I think in the end, you'll have this impression that you're on a more of a floating plane uh, than in a box that's suspended in the air. At least that's the, that's the architect's intention. Also, you can see the, the Intello, which all of this comes from 475. It was the only way we, would, we wouldn't have ever have the courage to do this. We could just go and buy this stuff and have no advice and no training on how, how to use it. It wouldn't have worked at all. However, it's not impossible to design and build to passive house standards has really not added that much to the cost of the project. Yes, the windows are better than typical American windows, but they perform three or four times better than American, typical American windows. And the house is extremely comfortable. One thing you will see is that there are not, there are not uh, heating registers or air conditioning registers below all, all the windows over there or over here, which is, a pro which is always a problem on a two by six built conventionally insulated house that people are freezing by the windows or they're hot by the windows. We don't have that here. Many of the complications of the mechanical system, and in fact the scope of the mechanical system are greatly reduced and the complexity are greatly reduced by doing following passive house. It's approaching the point of being a foolproof method for mechanical systems such that even the architects are able to do it themselves. And, and so far, without any complaints from the clients. It's been comfortable in, in this house all winter long. And the blow in cellulose has not been put in. It's the air barrier and the quality of the windows that's making the place quite habitable, even, even as it is. This is your chance to be famous.